morning, we continue to remember the life and legacy of former First Lady Rosalind Carter. Everyone knew she was a champion for mental health here in the United States, but what many don't know is that through one strategic decision, she helped impact the conversation about mental health worldwide. Chrissy Diaz joining us in studio this morning. Chrissy, you saw this process and the benefits of it firsthand. Yeah, I have a unique perspective on this one. Although Rosalind co-founded the Carter Center with the former president, only one program at the center bears her name. It's a mental health fellowship program for journalists, one I know quite well. And through that program, Mrs. Carter's legacy extends worldwide. Rosalind Carter never thrived on easy. Among the many programs at the Carter Center tackling some of the world's toughest issues, disease, elections, peace, Mrs. Carter chose to destigmatize mental health, and she found a strategic way to do it. Train the people who craft the narrative, journalists. She wanted to do something unique and that wasn't already being done by others and being done well. And she considered many things, but really landed on working with journalists. Media plays, plays such an important role in influencing people people's thoughts about mental illness and people that are living with mental illnesses. So this um, fellowship program, I think, is so important. Mrs. Carter understood the power of the written word, being an author of several books about mental health herself. So in 1996, she created the Rosalind Carter Mental Health Journalism Fellowship and gathered some of the world's top advisors and experts to educate the professional storytellers who can change the cultural conversation, influence policy, and inform their own newsrooms. Every year we have about 12 journalists who write on the issues that are really pressing of the day, but they're more pressing now since COVID and since people are dealing with family members with Alzheimer's and dementia. Over 40 years, the year-long program has trained more than 250 journalists all over the globe, from the United States and Latin America to Romania, the UAE, South Africa, and New Zealand. More than 1,500 stories were published under Mrs. Carter's guiding hand. It's how I created the docu-series Desperately Waiting about the gaps in care for dementia. But even without its fearless founder, director Eve Bird says the program will go on. It is more important than ever, honestly. I remember Mrs. Carter saying, I don't know that I'll see the end of stigma in my life. She said, but I see great change. Oh, it will continue on. And Christy, you were a part of that great change doing great work as a journalist. Tell us how involved was Mrs. Carter in that program? Very. Speaking from personal experience, she kicked off all of our trainings and she made sure we knew how important each one of our projects was to her. Now, I was part of the 2020 cohort right in the middle of the pandemic, so everything we did was on Zoom. But in years past, Mrs. Carter would meet and talk with the fellows face to face and she would make sure to get monthly updates on each project. Aisha. All right, Christy, such a beautiful memory and a great way to honor her through that program that will live on. The former first lady will be laid to rest next week. There's a private ceremony set for Wednesday in Plains. Mrs. Carter will lie in repose Monday here in Atlanta at the Jimmy Carter Presidential Library from 6 to 10 p.m. where the public is invited to attend.